Okay, everybody, get ready to get back to the future in the world of RC with this Tamiya Grasshopper that I purchased about a month ago just to relive my young RC days. I think I got it back in 1987, 1988 for the hefty price of $60. And what's really cool is it's been reissued a couple times and it is now available at a main for 94 dollars so not bad you know with inflation this should be like 200 bucks or 250 bucks so not bad at all if you are considering this journey i would highly recommend it and i'm going to give you 10 10 key observations about this vehicle and i'm going to give you a bunch bunch of running video as well and then at the at the end i'll get out i'll have a surprise for you guys so what is it it is the Tamiya Grasshopper is what this was introduced in 1984 uh, at a price of $60 but very well built. They had some other models that were more expensive like the Tamiya Frog 200 bucks or something so they didn't quite take off but this one just for the the chassis and the motor uh, and and the uh, ESC it was 60 bucks. 60 bucks is a good price. In 2005 it was reissued kind of redesigned and said hey let's sell it again since seems to be selling well still and they up they had a couple updates for it and i'll, I'll tell you about them in a, in a second uh, and then in 2013 they have this candy green edition and for some reason at amen it's cheaper 94 dollars instead of 110 and that's why i bought this one and then there's been a few you know there's a grasshopper 2 there's a mini grasshopper so just in this line it's it's got quite a heritage so so i bought it and i said oh man just like my childhood and the box is still iconic to uh what i remember you know it's still the same art what made them famous they basically had a bunch of line art on white background and that became the signature of tamiya tamiya is a family-owned operation in japan started in 1946 right after the war you know part of the their industrial revolution uh, to get them going again and i and basically they're still doing the same thing i don't think they're doing a lot of new models because the old ones are just doing so well you know minimal risk and engineering for and they're just raking in the cash <laughs> weird business model but hey if anybody can get away with that it's tamiya all right so i'm going to share with you guys uh, 10 observations that i had building this and playing with it the first one is the quality is still there from what i remember Tamiya is famous for their uh, plastic molding, their, their ABS plastic. Uh, I think they, they use uh, metal molds, so the quality is so good. It's still there. So uh, it comes together really well, and the instructions are still top-notch. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's better than some of the, the stuff that are, that's manufactured and designed today. Next observation is the tires. Tires are everything, right? And the tire, these tires are good. They're real rubber, and they're, on, they're sitting on beadlock wheels. And today, we don't even have that on a lot of our, of our cars. You know, they're just on there. They just stick on, they just stay on there or they're glued on. Uh, to have bead locks back in the day and, and things that really stick is very good. Now, mind you, in assembly, the rears, uh, the inner ring is very hard to put in, the inside the tire. So, but, you know, you just need some grease. <laughs> grease it up a little bit, have some, put some gloves on and just force it in. But without that, it is, it is a struggle. Oh, it's unvented. I, I pressed it really hard, so it's gonna take a while for the for the for the air to seep back in. Hmm. So maybe I should vent these. Third observation is the suspension is kind of primitive, and it's okay in the front, independent in the front. It's got a screw. <laughs> you always press it here, and it's not gonna move because there's a screw there. Uh, pretty good in the front, but the rear is so hard. Uh, mind you, this is a lighter vehicle than what was originally specced, but. Uh, you know they should change the spring rates but it is really hard on the rear all right third observation is it's got a 380 motor and i was like oh man 380 motor i can't upgrade it i don't have any of those and they they're using the mambuchi motor and a 380 go why 380 why not 540 and then but it, good, it turns out it's compatible with a 540 there's just an adapter there so uh and it's got some pretty good get up and go the 380 motor what happens is it has a th um, top speed of 13 miles an hour on a, a two cell lipo uh, 11 miles an hour on the original uh, nickel metal hydride battery and it's geared for acceleration so it's got some good pickup and it, it uh, 13 miles an hour won't, won't get you in trouble but number five building this is i recognize that there's a lot of concepts for uh, impact absorption so a lot of what the slash did why it's so durable 
uh, is, is in here, meaning you don't have rigid stuff. You know, this thing gonna take a hit. And I already just augured this several times on my test, test driving. So everything is flexy, everything can move uh, and the tires take the hit. So that's why it's so durable. And also it has a wing, right? It has a wing, but it's not gonna break like most wings because it's attached to the body. So, you know, just a subtle observation, but pretty cool. Observation number six is it's only two wheel drive, uh, but it can play in the loose stuff. Uh, first, it's, it's got a differential, open differential, so it gives it grip. Uh, but the, the weighting is, is, is really good. You know, it's more rear weighted. That's why the motor is all the way back there. Uh, and so it's got some good weight and some big traction on these tires. So when you see on those vintage videos, it's, it's playing in the sand. You can hardly do that right now, today, on, uh, on two-wheel drive vehicles today. You know, vehicles today are not built to be balanced. They're built to be overpowered and four-wheel drive, right, with gyro. <laughs> This thing was meant to be balanced and easy to drive. Observation number seven is they did modernize a little bit and they put in a real ESC, a modern ESC, the Hobbywing 1060 e ESC. Still got that Tamiya plug, but uh, they replaced the mechanical ESC. The mechanical ESC was, were three resistors, low, medium, high, uh, that would drain your battery uh, or, or, or take the power from the motor. So, you know, low, medium, high, nothing in between. <laughs> <laughs> so they had to get rid of that. And because also to, you had a, uh, a blade that, that uh, made contact uh, that always failed, but uh, that, that, that blade required a servo to run it. All right, next observation is the plastic gears are pretty good. You know, so I was like, I was gonna upgrade this right away because you know, while you're in there, but uh, you know, doing the research, they said, no, these are some of the best plastic gears ever made. Don't worry about them. And sure enough, uh, you know, that, you see how smooth it is, you know, and this can take a hit. So, uh, super cool that they did that. Observation number nine is no body clips. Uh-huh, uh-huh. We had something good already and then, you know, 30 years of, 40 years of uh, regressing, uh, no progress by putting body clips and whatnot. Now we're only starting to come back to this. But this is a hard body, but it's screwed on. Uh, it's really cool. And the battery, you access from the bottom. So. Very durable, no body clips, looks pretty darn good. Uh, a couple things with the body is the driver. I was like, how do you put this on? He screwed in from the roof. Uh, I was like, wow, uh, how could I forget that from, uh, from my childhood? But, so that's pretty cool. And the other thing is it's got a, a battery door that's pretty novel, meaning, you know, it's, it's like a, it can take a hit, uh, but softer materials, but it, it closes the door without tools, without screws. You know, so many now need a screw uh, or they pop open or you have a little thing. I go, hey, Tamiya did that right a long time ago. All right, I'm gonna put a battery in. So I'm using a, a two cell LiPo. This is uh, 2200 milliamp hour. And it's the same as this, same power as this, a nickel meta hydride, uh, about 3000, but this is higher voltage. And this is about 300 grams, 310, and this is about 110. So one third the weight, uh, they had a stick, stick, stick pack, which was ridiculous, uh, but they, they did make room for the stick pack here back in the day. But you know, on the uh, re-release, they took away the, the big hole, you know, made room for ESCs and whatnot. All right, so I will put it on, tool free. There you go. So as you can see, nice and neat, no screws. It has these little steering links, tiny, tiny wire, piano wire, uh, but I go, oh shit, better not break that or better not bend that. But it's got good geometry. It doesn't have, you know, what do you call that? Uh, it's a single uh, mounted wheel, so it, does, it doesn't have that, uh, what do you call that, a caster? It, you know, the, the, the wheel just tilts, so that's just old school. So here it is, good steering. I have a <laughs> expensive servo on it right now, and the power, Good for 13 miles an hour. Um, ooh. If I had double the power, that's what would happen. Okay, so observation number 10 is, it's still fun. They were just years ahead of their time and this vehicle is kind of like the sla Traxxas Slash and the T Traxxas TRX4 where they're kind of iconic. Also the uh, team associated RC10. 
uh, iconic that it kind of started, it, it, it boosted the hobby. Uh, it, made, it was so compelling that it got a lot of people in the hobby. Uh, so, still fun. And my surprise is, is I'm gonna gift it to a friend of mine who saved up for, for his first vehicle when he was 14 and it got run over by uh, a car uh, on its first run. So hopefully he'll, he'll make it on the channel. He's a super cool guy. Let me know in the comments what your first car was, whether you're as old as me and are in the Tamiya generation or whether you're in the, uh, the Traxxas or the Axials and whatnot. But uh, kinda, kinda cool, this is still available, still affordable, right? Thanks a ton, everybody. That's top speed right there. The top speed is 13 miles an hour. 13 miles an hour, my friends.